Hi, welcome to Celtomic, and today's topic is atomic structure. So, what's an atom? An atom is the smallest particle of an element and is made up of protons, neutrons, and electrons. So, from the table below, we can see that the proton is positively charged of plus one. The electron is negative charge of minus one. Next, let's look at the mass. So the relative mass of the proton and neutron are one. So this means that actually the mass of the proton is about the same as the mass of the neutron. But let's look at electron. You can see the electron is like a fraction of the mass of a proton or neutron. So this means that it's a very small molecule. It's very small, much smaller than the proton or neutron. Now, Let's look closely at an atom. So, we know that the atom is made up of electrons, protons, and neutrons. The protons and neutrons are located in the center of the atom, in this region here, known as the nucleus. The electrons, on the other hand, are orbiting around the nucleus in a region known as the electron shell. So, the electrons will move around the nucleus, they will orbit around it in the electron shell. Now, let's look at some properties of an atom. Okay, so we're going to use this imaginary element known as element X. Okay, so the first property of an atom is that an atom is neutrally charged. So, what does it mean to be neutrally charged? It means that the number of protons equals to the number of electrons. So this is the symbol for electrons. And this number here actually corresponds to the proton number, which is 3. So you can actually see that there are 1, 2, three protons and one, two, three electrons. So three equals three. So number of protons equals to number of electrons. Now let's get rid and have some space. Okay, so next, the second one, the nucleon or mass number shows the atomic weight of the atom. Well, so what does this mean? Atomic weight means the mass of the atom. How heavy is the atom? So the nucleon number is actually this number 5 here. So 5 represents nucleon number and 3 represents proton number. So nucleon number nucleon number equals to number of proton plus neutron. So we can see there is one, two neutrons and one, two, three protons. So two plus three equals five. And this matches this. Now we will dive deeper into the electron shell. So each electron shell can hold a certain number of electrons. The first shell can hold two electrons. The second shell can hold eight electrons. And the third shell can hold eight electrons. This is only true for the first 20 elements. So this means it's from element hydrogen to calcium. An atom is usually not stable in nature. And in order to become stable, you will either lose an electron or gain an electron to achieve a full valence shell. So what do you mean by what do I mean by full valence shell? Full valence shell means the shell is completely filled. So for the first shell to be completely filled, it has to have two electrons. For the second shell to be completely filled, it has to have eight electrons. If the third shell is to be completely filled, it has to have eight electrons. So for this case here, we can see that the first shell 
has two electrons. The second shell has one electron. So this means that the valence shell, which is the outermost shell, is not completely filled because it has only one instead of having eight electrons that it, need, that it needs. So in order for it to have full valence shell, it can either minus one electron, lose one electron, or gain seven electron. So for this particular case, it will be easier for it to lose an electron. So you'll go this way instead, you'll minus an electron. For this case here, on the outer shell, we notice that there are seven electrons in the outer shell. So you can either gain an electron or minus seven electrons. So for this case here, it will be easier for it to just gain one electron. When an atom gains a full valence shell, it has an octet structure. Octet structure meaning that it has a full valence shell. And this is actually the most stable structure. This is why atoms will either lose or gain electrons in order to have a full valence shell, which is the same as a noble gas. We will touch noble gas in the next few slides. When they start to lose or gain electrons, they will be charged. And charged atoms are known as ions. Since now the number of electrons is no longer equal to the number of protons, they will, be, they will have either a positive or negative charge. So a positively charged ion is known as a cation, or a negative charged ion is known as an anion. Okay, so let's look at this atom first. We see that this atom has two electrons in the first shell and one electron on the second shell. So this electron will lose an electron. This atom would lose an electron to form this ion here. You can see that this ion has two electron and three proton. So this means it will have a charge of plus one for this atom yes seven on the outer shell it gained one electron so now it has eight electron and seven proton so this will give it a charge of minus one so this is a cation And this is a N ion. Okay, so one way to tell what charge the ion is is by looking at the periodic table. So the periodic table is actually divided into matter and non matter atoms. And this is done here. At this point here, it will cascade down a staircase manner to form your metals on this side and your non-metals on this side. Okay, so to be able to know what charge it is, you have to look at the groups. The groups up here will tell you what charge the ion would be. So everything on group 1 would be a plus one ion. Group two, plus two ion. Group three, plus three ion. If it's in group seven, it's minus one. Group six, minus two. Group five, minus three. And one thing to note, if you look at this group zero, you realize that all of them have actually have a full valence shell already. And they do not need to form ions. They will just remain as atom because they already have a full octet structure. So 
this group here is known as the noble gas that I mentioned earlier. They won't form ions because they do not need to because they already have a full valence shell. So when you look at the periodic table, you realize that chlorine has a nuclear number of 35.5 compared to the other elements in the periodic table where they all have a nice whole number. Chlorine will have this decimal place here. So why is this so? There are actually two kinds of chlorine in the universe. So there is chlorine 35 and chlorine 37. Both of them are still chlorines, but they just have a different mass. So this is actually known as isotopes. So isotopes of the same element have the same proton number, but different nuclear number. So let's look at this um, diagram for the example. Okay, so we can see that for this case here, you have one, two, three protons and one nucleon. So three proton, one neutron, here, one, two, three protons, one, two neutron. So three proton, two neutron. One, two, three protons and one, two, three neutrons. Three proton, three neutron. Notice how the protons all remain the same, but only this changes. So all these here are actually isotopes of the same element. Just that they all have different nucleon numbers and neutrons. Remember that nucleon number is actually equals to proton plus neutron. So same number of protons but different number of neutrons. Which gives them different number of nucleon too. There are times where you will be asked to find the average number of an element. So let us look at chlorine now, since I gave the example earlier. So we know that chlorine exists as chlorine 35 and chlorine 37. So th numbers 35 and 37 shows their respective nucleon mass. So this so chlorine 35 have a nucleon mass of 35 and chlorine 37 has a nucleon mass of 37. The percentage here that you see here shows the abundance in the atmosphere. There is 75% of chlorine 35 and there is 25% of chlorine 37. So if you were to ask to find the average nucleon mass, this is what you do. You take the percentage, so let's start with chlorine 35. You take the percentage, which is 75% over 100%, because that's how much there is, times 35 plus, same thing, 25 over 100 now, so this is the other percentage, times 37, and your final answer will be 35. 0.5, which is what you see in the data booklet. Thank you for watching. Bye-bye.